Hey, I'm gonna geek out on CUDA and OpenCL. Now, let's be clear, I'm just gonna focus on the graphics cards, um, hardware acceleration of programs with graphics cards. I know OpenCL can be used on a lot of different platforms, so we're gonna ignore all the other ones, and, uh, and I know that OpenCL will work on NVIDIA, but if you do a Google search on just uh, how well OpenCL works on AMD cards versus NVIDIA, it works so much better on AMD that I think you'd be silly to buy an NVIDIA card to do OpenCL. So it's going to be CUDA on NVIDIA versus uh, OpenCL on AMD. Now, uh, AMD, they haven't really invested on the software side of things as much into OpenCL as NVIDIA has invested in CUDA. And so, based on what I've read, CUDA is more mature. I'm not sure exactly what that means. I don't really, I haven't done this stuff myself. Just read about it. but. It makes it sound like it's easier to do on CUDA at the moment, and it seems like a lot of the uh, a lot of scientists seem to be when they want to do like uh, fluid dynamics and you know when they want to do scientific calculations and they want to speed things up with the graphics card, they seem to be going to the CUDA on NVIDIA cards o over the OpenCL. Whereas OpenCL, AMD seems to be just kind of leaving it to uh, developers to do the legwork of uh, software development. Now in the end, NVIDIA, yeah, they, they're spending money on developing CUDA and making it more mature, but they're also, you know, coming out with cards like uh, Titan that costs a thousand dollars or or Titan Z that's effectively two Titans on one card but three thousand, which is a lot. But maybe that's worth it for someone. Uh, you know, if you have a huge scientific budget or you're used to spending a lot of money uh, renting time on a supercomputer, maybe 3000 isn't that much. But I think it's a lot of money for a graphics card. Especially where in the future it's not gonna. It's gonna be outdated so quickly. Now, uh. One thing that's interesting, though, with all of this is you have AMD, of course, has its APUs. And maybe I just stop and explain, because, you know, one of the problems with doing hardware acceleration is you have to take the memory from the CPU memory, transfer it to GPU memory, do whatever calculations you're going to do, and then transfer the results back. And that transfer time can... Uh, can reduce the overall efficiency of the whole process. Now, hopefully you, your calculation is large enough that it's worth it to send it to a GPU, which is, you know, capable of a lot more parallel processing. I mean, hell, the Titan has how many thousands of CUDA cores? I, mean, <laughs> I think it's 3,000 CUDA cores, something like that. Whereas, uh, you know, a CPU is just a few cores. A lot more latency, but... In, in any case, it's if you're doing a lot of par parallel processing, it's worth it to send it to a graphics card and do it there. But there's the transfer time it takes to transfer the data there and then transfer it back. But that's where APUs come in. Like AMD, they've got their APU where both the CPU and the graphics card all on one chip. And it uses the same pool of memory. So you don't have to transfer the data from one pool of memory to another. It just has to know where to look, yep, where to point it. And so uh, the only problem is, though, at the moment, those APUs, they're not, they're not that powerful. Like, I mean, an AMD APU is nothing compared to, like, a high high-end CPU and a high-end GPU together, but not having to transfer memory matters. And so I think that could uh, be a game-changer in the future if uh, if AMD were to come out with a really powerful APU, with a really powerful graphics card on die. And, and with the DDR4, the memory speeds are going to go up, 
I'm not sure if they can keep the latency up as well. They might have to sacrifice one for the other, but you know, you've got really high, fast DDR4 RAM and all you know, on APU with, again, CPU, GPU on the same die. That could be really good with OpenCL. Uh, now, NVIDIA, they kind of bullshit with their marketing because they, they make it sound like they're going to somehow do the equivalent of that. And they sort of are, but they're really just going to speed up the transfer from uh, from the CPU memory to GPU memory. I think they call it unified memory interface, or I don't know, they got some bullshit name for it, but it's not, it's not really unified memory, it's just, again, an increase in the speed of memory transfer speed. Not problem. I don't know if that's the official word, but the point is just the speed that they can transfer data from CPU memory to GPU memory. Um, and hey, maybe PCI 4 will come along and it'll change everything there. And that won't be as much of an issue if they can really increase uh, bandwidth between the motherboard and the graphics card. <clears throat> Yeah. So I think it's all pretty cool though. <laughs> pretty interesting. Be I'm guessing it's fairly difficult to program for. But uh well it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of years. And it's probably just gonna become even more popular with time because GPU prices of course go down and something new that's even more powerful comes along. So it becomes more and more cost effective for people to just buy a graphics card. I mean, today's, uh, you know, $800 graphics card will be $400 in a couple of years or th or even through two or 300. And so, yeah, I mean, you can buy it off the shelf and if you know how to do it, use hardware acceleration. And I mean, there's a lot of programs like, uh, like Adobe is sweet, a lot of their programs use hardware, hardware acceleration and I think uh, it's just going to become more common and interesting. Okay, that's all I got, thanks. Be sure to subscribe and click on the annotation for a video on my wish list for a new FX AMD processor.